What did you have for suhoor? I didn't have suhoor. I had a goat meat sandwich and some water. <laughs> a handful of lettuce and two pieces of chicken. For suhoor, I ate sleep. I didn't wake up. Oh, I had granola and yogurt and like two water bottles and a Gatorade and my vitamins. Um, banana, yogurt, peanut butter, dates, cereal, pasta. What? Egg. Uh, rice. Yeah. Uh, burgers, tea, and protein. Breaking fast during Ramadan 2022. Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. Sunat Manyi Garokan, Babu Kapuasa, Allahu Akbar, Omiyan. The Quran says, Al-Hakumu Takathur, Hatta Zultumul Maqadir. You are busy, piling up, calculating, developing your careers, your money, your occupation, your wealth, until you visit the graves. <laughs> Are you ready? <laughs> what's the day today? It's Monday. Monday. Okay, so what's the hadith of today? Wait, let me give you a clue. It's the hadith of Abu Huraira, radiyallahu an, and the Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam aqal, the Prophet sallallahu he said, Yes, tahadu, tahabu. What does that mean? Give gifts and you love your other. And you will love each other. Give each other gifts and you will love one another. I'm not grouchy. I just need my coffee. I am absolutely speechless. Look at this baby. It's the cutest baby I've ever seen. Look at her smile. Oh, oh wow. wow. Ich bezeuge, dass es keinen Gott gibt, außer Allah. Ich bezeuge, dass Muhammad sein Gesandter ist. Allah كبرت كلمة تخرج من أفواههم يقولون إلا كذبا said our cat always jumps on his head while he's praying. I didn't believe him. Ramadan Mubarak, y'all.
I don't pray my salah, but I'm a good person though. You know, I don't I don't practice Islam, I don't observe the rules, but I'm a good person though, and Allah knows what's in my heart and Allah is Ahrahman, he is the most merciful. So I'm gonna be alright on the day of judgment because I'm a good person. How many times have you heard that from people? I would have been like now let me explain it to you like this people. If you own a big house and you hire someone to come and clean inside your house, you go away for five, six hours, you come home, and they haven't even stepped foot in the house. But they cut the grass beautifully. MashaAllah tabarakallah, they've done the best gardening job you've ever seen. Are you gonna be happy with them? Are you gonna wanna pay them their money? Are you gonna invite them back? Are you gonna recommend them to friends? No, 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 no. Of course you're not, because they haven't done what you've asked them to do. Allah has asked us to do things while we are here in this dunya. And if you do not listen to them and you ignore them, he will not be happy with you. Assalamu alaikum warahmatullah. Do you want to hear a miracle of Allah? Do you want to see one? I'll show you right now. Okay, so this, this right here, this is how I hear. Now you may be thinking, what on earth is he talking about? Alright, cool. So I was born with something called bilateral microtia, whereby I was born with no ears, none. This, if you look here, this is what my ears look like, and they have no ear canal. I have no hole in my ear. Not one single hole, not one. Therefore, alhamdulillah, when I was born, the doctors immediately thought I was deaf. They said, the kid has no ear canal. He clearly can't hear. There's no way in heck he can hear. And after countless dias from my mother, Subhanallah, I can hear. Now, to make it make sense, with this, I can hear normally. Without it, if you were to imagine you're on a plane, or you're really covering the hole in your ear, and really pressing against it, and someone wants to talk to you, that is how I hear without the hearing aid. Here's where the miracle comes in. By Allah, how can I hear without any holes in my ears? My ear canal are blocked. Blocked, blocked, from the, from the inner ear to the outer ear, they're blocked. And wallahi, I've been to the hospital hundreds of times. And every time they keep testing my hearing and they're just surprised by how I can hear. They have no answers to the question. They have none, no answers. And it was when I was around, around 15 years old, is when I realised the miracle of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. When I was talking to somebody, right, around the corner from my local hospital, where I had to go, um, and I was in a chicken shop and I was speaking to that man because my mum would speak to this woman and so I thought, you know what, let me speak to this guy and he wasn't answering me so I looked at my mum and I said, Mama, why is this man ignoring me? Mama said, you have ear. He cannot hear. And I said, Mama, what do you mean? He's got ears. What do you mean he can't hear? She said, you have That doesn't mean anything. That doesn't mean anything. If Allah wants you to hear, you'll hear. So subhanAllah, from the age of eight years old to the age of 15, I went through 14 operations to try to look normal. When I met somebody normal, they couldn't hear. I've cut my ribs. I've taken my rib cartilages to form it as the way it is now. I've taken the skin from the back of my leg to put it around my ears. I've been through countless operations, countless, countless operations. Just to meet somebody that has ears but cannot hear. SubhanAllah. Well, I سبيل الدموع سبيل مريح Wallahi, I remember when I first started practicing, Wallahi, I had no one. Wallahi, I had no one. For like, maybe like three months. Just me and my own fam. I used to make so much da'a to Allah. Please, Ya Allah, give me righteous companions. I had no one fam, no one, no one. I would go to college, I would go home. I would go to the masjid, I would go home. By myself, like three, four months. And Alhamdulillah, you know, I used to make so much da'a to Allah. I just happened to go to one of Imran's classes. We just clicked. Started like Arabic class with Saad, we just clicked. Alhamdulillah, Allah blessed me with why I believe some of the most righteous companions Allah could have blessed me with, man. Alhamdulillah. 
But you know what the craziest thing is? Is till now that the still coming true because every single of my trip we do, Allah puts more righteous companions in my in my in my life. Alhamdulillah. But you know what's even better for me? What's even more powerful for me is this time Allah Allah did one better. Not only did he bring new companions into my life, he brought some of my boys from Chahidia, he brought them and he allowed them to come around with me. And he brought them onto the deed as well. And wallah, he never, ever, ever, ever would I have ever imagined I'll be doing Umrah with my friends from Jahiliya. Wallah, Allah knows how much the eyes to make for them. Allah knows how much the eyes to make for them. And wallah, I'm, I'm so grateful to Allah for allowing me to meet you guys. First, it's a Saturday night. It feels so good. You start doing it on Tuesdays and Thursdays. And it's got you. So just number five talks about how hypocrites align themselves with Allah's enemies, um, how they're lazy in their worship, and it talks about their final and their end in the hereafter. So the lessons we can take from this is um, don't judge other people and be careful of being a hypocrite. So, you know, we can just focus on ourselves and leave the rest to themselves. This chapter also talks about seeking a law besides the law of Allah for judgment and how this is a trait of a hypocrite and all the hypocrite is trying to do is try to turn you away from Allah and not worship Allah. So we also learn about practical legal guidance here so such as shortening the prayer when we're on a journey or at a time of fear. There's a few other things as well but most of it is reminding us that we should be aware of Allah and fear only Allah. Assalamu alaikum. So I went to a lecture this morning and it was about Ihsan, having perfection in anything and everything that you do. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves those that have uh, Ihsan in anything and everything. Okay, whether it be school, work, study, anything you do, do with perfection, especially your Iman. And it was about worshipping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to the best of our ability, having ihsan in our iman, trying to perfect it every single day, striving, 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 having high aspirations. And like Allah, we give Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the bare minimum, but He still continues to pour His blessings upon us. Like the, the blessings and bounties that we have are not even quantifiable. And so the hadith He brought up was every day Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has rights. Uh, over every single one of us to thank him and say alhamdulillah 360 times for only one bounty and that being our joints and as soon as he said that i was like i was mind boggled like i was so stunned i was like for a solid couple of minutes because i knew there were 360 joints in the body as soon as he connected 360 to the bounty of it being joints i was like and I even went on my phone to double check how many joints are there in the body. 360. Subhanallah, the fact that the Prophet ﷺ said this 1400 years ago, when the joints, the number of joints were only discovered in the 20th century, I don't understand how you can't accept Islam. I've, it's such a small thing, but it was so, it's so big to me. It's like, wow. Like, wow, subhanallah. And then it's like, so why do we give Allah the bare minimum where we can't even count our blessings and our biggest blessing being La ilaha illallah Muhammad Rasulullah. I was like, I'll post, the, I'll post my notes on my Instagram story, but just that, just that hadith, it just reboosted my iman. I was like, subhanallah. After I accepted Islam at 18 years old and after I fell out with my parents and had to leave their home, uh, I then was introduced to my wife and before we got married, I asked her, what, what do you want as a, as a dowry? In Islam, you always have to give the, the bride a gift and typically it's financial. So I, I was definitely worried because I didn't have any work or I had no money. I said, what would you like? She said to me, Abrahman, you don't have any money and you don't have a job. In the future you will, but you don't right now. So all I want from you, she said to me, is one thing. I just want you to give me a book. Riyad al-Salihin, which is a very famous book, a collection of the sayings of the Prophet Muhammad, peace and blessings be upon him. She said, just give me that. That's all I want. I couldn't, I said, wow, you know, I thanked God and alhamdulillah. I couldn't believe, I went out to the bookstore, picked it up and we got married, alhamdulillah. About, twin, not about, 29 years ago. May Allah bless her. Ramadan trivia, day five. Who were the two people involved with the first murder on earth? 
Uh, Cain killing his brother Abel. Whose children were they? Adam and Eve. How old will everyone be in Jannah? 33. Good job. Dajel is going to have one word written across his forehead. What is this word? It's going to say kefir, which means disbeliever. How old was the Prophet وسلم, when the Quran was revealed to him? He was 40 years old. And the Quran was revealed for 23 years. Good job. What? Is Allah the greatest? Yeah. Out of the five for the prayers, which ones are not recited out loud? The Asr. Good job. What is the holy water known as? Zamzam water. Mm -hmm. Good job. Which surah is known as the heart of the Quran? The heart of the Quran, Surah Rahim. Yaseen. Oh my Yaseen. What is the only surah in the Quran that doesn't start with the Bismillah? Oh, I know that one. Tawbah. back to the previous question before I got disconnected. The answer is I don't Good job. Come back tomorrow for more. Hello, I get asked this question a lot. Well, basically, four and a half years ago, I was living in Dubai. And uh, you know me, I'm a friendly, happy person. So I attract people and uh, I had many friends. But then my life took a turn for the worst. Uh, my job stopped paying me. I got into some financial difficulty. My wife of 22 years divorced me. And I was quite depressed, and I needed friends, and they'd all disappeared, except for an Emirati, a Lebanese guy, Jordanian-Palestinian, and a Saudi guy, four Muslim guys. And uh, they were lending me support, being caring, loving, you know, giving me what I needed um, when all my other friends had disappeared. They were so respectful, so kind, I wanted to be part of that family. So one Friday, in Silicon Oasis, in the busiest mosque, I drove there and I said, does anyone speak English? A 65-year-old Pakistani guy said he did and I said, I want to become a Muslim. And he said, uh, okay, come with me. He showed me how to do wudu and then he took me into the mosque and uh, he said, repeat after me. Ashahadu an la and I went, ash, uh, again, again, again. And he said, okay, ash, and I went, ash, ha, ha do do and I did it like that syllable by syllable and then afterwards every single person in that mosque I mean everybody came and congratulated me and welcomed me to Islam amazing now I was a Christian beforehand so it was easy for me to uh, accept there is only one God and uh, he is God it was for me adding the fact that there was another messenger after Isa and that is Muhammad peace be upon him that's my story, guys. I hope, I hope it inspires other people. When a dog licks our clothes, do we need to clean it? No. This is a mistaken idea people have about dogs, you know. A dog licks you, oh, you know, you have to go wash it uh, seven times, one time with earth. No, 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 no. This is just if the dog eats or drinks from the vessel you're eating and drinking in, you pour it out, let him finish his drink and eat, and then you clean it seven times, one of the times with earth, right? Clean earth. That's what's required. But a dog licking you does not break your wudu. Patting a dog does not break your wudu. Actually, dogs, you know, though they have become sort of like uh, an evil in Muslim society, you know, people see a dog, and a lot of the Westerners I know would tell me, what's wrong with you Muslims? As soon as we come with our dogs, Muslims are running in all directions. <laughs> I just saw the TikTok where this doctor was talking about why pork is bad for you. I was watching the entire TikTok like this. I knew that. I knew that also. Listen. All I'm saying is that Islam is the truth. Thank you and bye. You will never see me style a balaclava. And the reason is because until Muslim women and black men can wear their hijabs, their hood, or whatever they like in a very safe manner and don't get targeted and hate crime, then fine, maybe I'll consider it. But it seems kind of disgusting for me to just use my privilege as, you know, an individual, an Asian individual to just wear a balaclava style it and like use it as a fashion trend and try to get more views off of it while people are literally getting hate crime and targeted for it until people in quebec are allowed to wear their hijabs freely i will not be styling a balaclava no ma'am i don't care about the views for that you will never see that from me and if you want to wear a balaclava literally because of warmth i can understand that but i will be sticking to a beanie and a scarf and that's for me bye